This video is brought to you by Bitbox NES Game Cases, the best way to store, display, and show off your NES game collection. So be sure to check out stoneagegamer.com forward slash bitbox for more information. How's it going, gamers? My name is John with Gamester81.com, and in this episode, I'll be reviewing the ColecoVision Super Game Module. I'm really excited to be reviewing this because this is a hard item to find and come by. It came out a couple years ago, and I want to say a big thank you to my good friend Stu for, for providing me uh, a copy of the Super Game Module to review for you guys. So, so thank you, Stu, for that. Before I dive into the ColecoVision Super Game Module, I just want to briefly touch base on the ColecoVision system itself, which is right here. It is my all-time favorite retro game console of all time. Uh, I think it's got a lot of great features it can do. It is completely underrated. It's a really great console to collect for because unlike the NES, games are still affordable. And there's a lot of great games available still out there. So it is a fun game to collect for. And it's very diverse, as, as I'll explain here in a second. The ColecoVision system itself came out in 1982 by Coleco. It retailed for 175 US dollars. It was packed in with Donkey Kong by Nintendo, which is one of the big reasons why it sold really, really well. Some interesting facts about the ColecoVision itself. Coleco name actually goes back to 1932. It's an old company. It's been around for a while. It started during the Great Depression by a Russian shoemaker. Last name was Greenberg. He came over to the States and created his own shoe company. And the ColecoVision name actually stands for Connecticut Leather Company. His son went on to carry the company throughout the 60s. They produced plastic pools and various different other things. In the 70s, Atari released the Atari Pong. They decided to enter the Pong market, create their own clone called the Telostar, which was great. They had different colors that produced, and those actually sold really well for Coleco. Probably in the 80s was the biggest time for Coleco. Uh, and if you guys remember the Cabbage Patch Kids toy line, they actually produced those, sold very, very well, huge seller for them. Later on in the 80s, they produced the Talking Elf from the TV show, which I had kind of like... Uh, uh, Teddy Ruxpin, where the, you put the cassette tape in and he'd talk and read a story to you. But they're probably best known for the ColecoVision. And what is also cool and I really like about the ColecoVision is that as far as the CPU and the graphics chip, it's got the same CPU and graphics chip as the MSX computer in Japan, as well as the SG-1000 Sega console in Japan as well. If you guys aren't familiar with the MSX computer, it never really hit the States, but it was hugely popular in Japan in the 80s and 90s. And the MSX hardware itself was actually created by Microsoft, of all companies. But uh, for some strange reason, never really did well in the States, never sold any, any computers in the States, which is, which is really too bad because a lot of great games were produced and franchises were pro produced for the MSX, including Metal Gear was probably the main one that actually started uh, on the MSX and later ported to the NES. So it's a great, great, great system. This has got the same graphics CPU chip as that. The sound chip CPU, is actually the same as the Sega Master System. So it is a very diverse console. Uh, when it came out initially, there was two expansion ports for it, or expansion modules, pardon me, that came out for it. The first one was the ColecoVision Expansion Module 1, which you basically, you can see this expansion port here. It just actually plugs right in the front there, and it, it enables you to play Atari 2600 games on it. Now this was a huge deal in, for Atari, and there's a big lawsuit because at the time when this came out, Atari 2600 was its main competition. You had the Intellivision, later on the Atari 5200, as well as the computers during this time. You had the Apple II, the Commodore 64, and IBM had their computer line. So, uh, big issue. Coleco actually argued that they, they made it from different parts, and they won the, the actual lawsuit, which is fascinating. And later on, they produced the Coleco Gemini, which is basically an Atari 2600 clone. Uh, so, that's basically why you'll see a big expansion port here. They initially plan on releasing another module for it. Uh, after this, of course, they released uh, another a steering wheel, which is expansion module two for Turbo game and their driving games, which is cool. It had a pedal and it's really neat. But they actually wanted to create a super game module for it, which would expand the, the memory and, and enhance the sound chips and, and do all that good stuff. Never came to be. Instead, what Coleco decided to do was they said, decided to release uh, the Atom computer in 1983 retail for about 725 US dollars, which is a ton of money now, especially back then. It was a huge flop. Came out during the, the, the crash, the video game crash. Uh, Coleco basically, it crippled Coleco financially. They basically end up discontinuing that and the Coleco Vision, unfortunately. So bad move on Coleco's end for sure. But years later and now, uh, Coleco is still live and strong. There's a huge 
a collecting market for it. There's a huge homebrew market for it. I'll put some links to some great homebrew sites. You can pick up some great homebrews. And I, I use the term homebrews lightly because these are, are really professionally and really well made games. And I think people kind of throw their term homebrew and they think really cheaply made or you know homemade. These are legit games, just like this is legit. This is the Super Game Module, came out by Opcode Games a couple years back. You can look at this, and I'll do an unboxing here in a few, and you'll see that the quality of this is on par with what ColecoVision did back in the early 80s. In fact, if I didn't tell you that this came out a couple years ago, you would believe this, this is actually a licensed ColecoVision product, which essentially it is. Uh, the rights for ColecoVision now are owned by River West Brands, and Eduardo, who owns Opco Games, acquired the rights to produce the Super Game Module through through that company, which is really cool. So let's do this now. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you an unboxing, take a closer look at the Super Game Module, show you what's included. Then later on in the latter half of the video, I'm gonna do some gameplay, demonstrate some games, and kind of show you how they play using the Super Game Module. So without any further ado, let's take a closer look at the box and Super Game Module. Okay guys, so here is a closer look at the Super Game Module box itself. I love what they did here, Eduardo and Opco, because they really matched the artwork and art style of the original ColecoVision box art. Um, it has a rainbow logo. It is compatible with the Atom. There's an expansion port on the Atom computer as well. Here's the side, here's the back. Even notice the proof of purchase here, the Cleco name has got nice styrofoam packaging, some games that are coming out for it, that have come out for it already, or are coming out soon. And uh, yeah, I love the color design. It really, really fits. It also comes with an advertisement for uh, Team Pixel Boy, which shows some games that are coming out for it. I'll go over more detail about what games are av currently available for the Super Game Module that you'll need this actual module in order to play. Here's the Super Game Module Owner's Manual. I love what they did here. It also matches the artwork and art style of the original ColecoVision games, so the blue. Blue graphics here, the blue, blue highlights. This is how you plug it in. And on the last page here, it shows, it talks about the Super Game Cartridge special features. What the Super Game Cartridge is, is it has, it's a cartridge with more memory. So for example, a typical cart for a ColecoVision can hold, use anywhere from eight to 16 kilobytes of ROM uh, and due to the cost at the time. Um, some homebrews today, they'll release 32 kilobytes of ROM storage. This, the Super Game cartridge, actually can hold up to 128 kilobytes of ROM, which obviously in today's standards is pretty low, but for ColecoVision standards, that's really impressive. And what, when you take this Super Game module cart and you add it to the Atom computer, which has extended memory compared to the ColecoVision, it makes it even more powerful. So you're curious what the Super Game module is. I've talked about the history and how it come, came to be. This is what it looks like. You'll notice on the back has a ColecoVision uh, logo in, in, embossed there. And it has a nice kind of a metal-like uh, tab here, which matches the system really well. And it what I really like, it has this red indicator light to tell you that the system's powered on. The ColecoVision doesn't have that built into it, so that's always a great feature. And all you do is just basically plug it in here like so. In fact, the sound chip in this is uh, an AY38910, which is on par with the MSX sound chip that's in that computer, along with a lot of the arcades back in the day. So it does have enhanced sound, uh, which makes it easier to port MSX games to the ColecoVision, because I mentioned before that the, the graphics chip's the same, pretty much. Now the sound chip's the same, so you can easily port games over with the enhanced sound, the graphics, the memory to do so, uh, which, which is huge because there's a lot of great games for the MSX. Um, in addition, um, it also, uh, enhances the RAM on to from one kilobytes to 32 kilobytes. So that, that's definitely huge. Um, so you got better sound, better, better RAM storage, and overall you get a better gaming experience with the Super Game module. Now, if you're wondering as far as initial cost of how much this actually cost when it came out a couple years back, the first batch, they produced 250 uh, of these Super Game modules. They were for pre-order, most of them were for pre-order. Uh, 220 of those were pre-ordered while the rest were used, the remaining 30 were used for spares and testing, etc. In late 2012, they, they released additional 10 units that were uh, designated to be sold on eBay, uh, six of these uh, to go to key contributors of the campaign. And of these additional 16 units, they produced 10 of these 
uh, that were actually clear case. So instead of the black case, they had a clear case, which was limited to 10. Those are actually worth quite a bit. As far as total cost goes, you get the box, the manual, the, car, the module itself, 90 US dollars, which is, I think is a steal. It's a great deal for this initially. Those are selling, I've seen on eBay, this thing's selling almost 10 times that cost. It's, it's pretty crazy that the demand for this thing. Um, and then 95 for uh, in Canada and shipping uh, with with shipping and then 100 for, for international, okay? So not too bad of a deal. I think it's actually pretty good. Opcode did a great job. Some games that Opcode are planning to release upcoming is a new Donkey Kong with the cutscenes, kind of like the Atom uh, port that came out. A Goonies coming out, which is an MSX port, as well as Nightmare coming soon. There's also a game available on Collector Vision called Rollerball, which you can pick up that is uh, designated for the Super Game module. The Super Game module itself is compatible with pretty much 99% of all ColecoVision games, so you can just leave it in there, you can plug it in, and it will not affect the game. There's one game that it will affect, I don't recall the name, and there's another game that it will affect as well. And, that, and ironically, the one game that it will affect is my own. It's called Game Trade One, the video game. So if you have that and you have the Super Game module, just unplug the module and it'll work. Otherwise, it will glitch out. It doesn't ruin, ruin, ruin the cart or the system. It just glitches out. It's, it's interesting. I'm not sure why it necessarily does that. Another company that is producing games is Team Pixel Boy, which I showed you here in the flyer. Uh, and I, have, I picked up all their, their releases that they have so far. So uh, Faxter, which is an MSX port, I believe, it's a conversion. A Zaxxon Super Game, which is uh, an Atom port. I'm going to click on Atom. King Valley, which is another MSX conversion. Buck Rogers, which is an Atom conversion. I love the quality of these. They're really high quality, high production value here. Dragon's Lair, Lair which is another uh, Atom port. And Mecha 8, which is a great game. This is actually a homebrew um, that was designed for the MSX. Um, and it was developed for the MSX, but it was poured over to the, the ColecoVision. Super expand, uh, super game module. If you guys are interested in picking up a ColecoVision Super Game module and you weren't able to get the first batch, they did announce a second batch that they were going to make 150 more. Uh, people are on, on on the on the queue for that, and those are currently being produced. There is kind of a short hiatus with Eduardo; he's kind of left for a little bit, but uh, I'm sure he'll come back and produce more, possibly, hopefully, because as I mentioned before, these things actually sell for quite a bit on the secondhand market especially those clear case ones go for an insane amount um, because obviously um, it's a great product. So let me show you some gameplay of the games I do have here so you can kind of see uh, what they're about and go from there. Okay, now I'm gonna show you some gameplay. Uh, we're gonna start with Mecha 8. This is the homebrew MSX computer game I was talking about that came out uh, recently. This is actually a really fun shooting game. You can see the music right off the bat is better than what you typically hear on a ColecoVision game. And you can see that the, the graphics are impressive. In fact, they look very similar to almost Nintendo graphics. Well, uh, it just so happened that Coleco, when they went to Japan, they showed uh, employees of Nintendo the prototype of the ColecoVision. This is before the Famicom came out. And Nintendo actually got the idea of as far as the graphic way, the pixels fell and everything from Coleco and the way that kind of works. So very interesting about that. But this is a really fun shooting game. Kind of reminds me of a futuristic 1942 game. Next game is Thaxter. This is a platforming game. You, you play this kind of a robot. Almost looks like he's from Power Rangers. And you basically push town and you transform into this ship. It's weird controls though because if you push down on the ship, you kind of push, you basically transform back into the robot. So you got to push diagonal. It's kind of interesting. It takes a while to get used to the controls, but I love the music. I love the, the sound in this game. It's, it's really well done. And it's just a fun shooter platforming game. Check out. King Valley is a game that came out by Konami uh, for the MSX. The object of this game is you collect these gems and you have one weapon. You get these zombies or mummies, or whatever they are, come after you. And you get that, there's a sword in the middle there. And the action button basically throws the sword. The action button also jumps. So you can't jump with the sword, if that makes sense. So again, kind of whack, wacky and kind of funky controls. But once you get the hang of it, it's not bad. Once you collect all the gems, you basically pass the stage. Lovely music in this game. Moving on to Atom ports for the Super Game module. This first we're going to start with is Buck Rogers. This game was also produced for the ColecoVision in a cart form. 
This is a super one. This is what they call a super super game, basically meaning enhanced graphics and sound. Uh, and this is a really fun shooting game. First level reminds me of something out of Star Wars, like the Star Wars arcade. It's got a really cool kind of third-person perspective. You, you're shooting these flying egg sauces. Uh, they look like eggs to me. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of gets tricky because even though the angle is kind of funky, and this particular level you can only get so high on the stage. But there's some other cool levels outside of this one, and it progressively, progressively gets harder and harder. Dragon's Lair is a port from the arcade, which is a really popular game in the arcade, which is basically a laser disc with our cartoons. You push certain buttons at certain times. Obviously the gameplay on this is a lot different. In fact, this game was ported to the NES and this gameplay is a lot different than that version too. I'm terrible at this game, I'll be honest with you, so you'll see me die a lot in this, but uh, obviously the sounds enhanced uh, and graphics are, are enhanced as well compared to the typical ColecoVision cart and game that you'll see for the system. The last game I'm gonna show you that I have for the Super Game Module is Zaxxon. This came out for the Atom as well. This is based on a, a really popular Sega arcade game that's been ported to other or other systems, including the SG-1000, among others. It's an isometric view. It's very interesting. It's kind of hard to tell where, how high in depth you are as far as your enemies, too. It's the one complaint I have about this, this game. But overall, the graphics are really nice. They've done a really good job as far as kind of fitting the arcade's quality uh, as far as the isometrics. And, and I love the sound effects, you know, depending on how high or low you are. In, in, with the ship, it definitely makes uh, different noises, but this game has been ported to open different platforms and it's really a fun shooter as well. I enjoy it a lot. So in conclusion, what do I think about the Super Game Module? I think it's a great addition to the ColecoVision. If you own a ColecoVision already and you're able to pick one of these up, you can extend your library of great MSX games. I'm sure they're gonna port some SG-1000 games as well from the Sega uh, system from Japan. And uh, because it has the same graphical chip and enhanced sound, you're able to play a lot better games for the ColecoVision, have that arcade quality feel uh, for the ColecoVision, which is great. To put it in perspective, if you guys are huge fans of Nintendo Entertainment System, which many of us are, imagine if a company produced an attachment or peripheral for the NES that would extend and enhance the NES so you can actually play your NES but play new games on the system, that would be a better experience. That's kind of how it is for the ColecoVision. So there is a large, uh, homebrew market and uh, I use the term homebrew lightly because this thing is not a homebrew. Uh, this is a professional item uh, with a high, high production value and so are the games coming out for the ColecoVision for that matter. The, the quality and production value is, is really incredible. So I'll put links to uh, several websites below in case you guys are interested in, in uh, picking up games for the ColecoVision that are new games as well as if you guys want to get on a waiting list. For the ColecoVision Super Game Module, I'll put a link to the website where you can put on a waiting list for it. Uh, but overall, I really think this is a really cool addition. Um, I don't really have any complaints about it um, other than maybe my game not working with it. <laughs> but that's just very, very minor. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I appreciate you guys' support. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of this module. If you guys want to stay in touch, please follow me on Facebook, Twitch, uh, Twitter, as well as Instagram. I'll put links to all those below. And you can follow me on my website, gamesradio1.com. Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys soon. Happy gaming. Take care. In this video, I mentioned my game, Games Radio 1, the video game available for the ColecoVision. It is currently for sale at atari2600.com. I'll put a link below in case you guys are interested. Thanks for your support.